Some people have been starting to think that improvements in aerodynamics are becoming ever more marginal, that we might in fact be getting to the end of the golden age of aero gains. But Zip could well have just kick-started things once again. Check these out, the revolutionary 454 NSWs with sawtooth profile. So what's the story then? I mean, they look unique for a start, but are they more aerodynamic? Well, yes they are. Apparently at shallower yaw angles and at zero degrees, they save two watts over the 404 NSWs. And then at more extreme wind angles, so 15 degrees of yaw and upwards, the savings increase to over five watts. And that's tested at 30 miles an hour. But the master stroke, the sawtooth's ace card, if you will, is that according to Zip, they are much, much more stable in crosswinds because they're much better able to handle side forces acting on the rim. To the point, they say, that you could conceivably, comfortably take your hands off the handlebars to, I don't know, put a jacket in your back pocket, for example, when to do so with normal deep section wheels would leave you hitting the deck. Now that is an extreme illustration. So in real world conditions, what it means is that you would be able to use an ultra aero deep section wheel for more of the time in more wind conditions. Now, what's actually the science behind it and how does it work? Well, we have found the perfect man to talk about it. The guy who's led the project, in fact, who has overseen the 36 iterations of this wheel and 212 hours in a wind tunnel. So this is Michael Hall, who's the Director of Advanced Development here at Zip. And I guess it's fair to say that this sawtooth profile is, is, your, is your brainchild. Exactly. This is something we've been working on for many years. Um, really, we've kind of trying to take the next evolution of Firecrest. And really what we try to do is look to inspirations in nature, biomimicry. Um, you can find examples of things that are similar to this high profile profile in birds and whales and that sort of thing and it really helps with the control of those animals. So there's, there's multiple things that are going on, right? So one of the, the problems with deep section rims is the deeper you go, the more side force um, you generate because of the deeper airfoil section. Basically with the sawtooth profile, um, we're able to achieve you know deeper section um, in certain areas and shallower section in others, which in one instance lowers the side force. The other thing that we're doing that's critical is what we're doing is controlling the vortex shedding. So if you look at what we, these hyperfoils, each one of these basically energizes the air and in a crosswind situation basically provides a mechanism for the vortex to shed. And we also, not only with the profile, but also with the new improved hex fin dimple pattern. Okay, so Michael, perhaps you can try and explain how does the sawtooth actually reduce those side forces? Yeah, exactly. So one of the things we noticed with the Firecrest was we really need to pay attention to not just the aerodynamic efficiency of the rim, but also um, how the rim handles what we call the stability. So we, we started looking at, instead of looking at rims purely from an aerodynamic efficiency standpoint, we really started looking at the aero balance. You know, over the years we've, we've modified the dimple patterns like with the, the previous NSW rims, but what you see today is the, the newest generation, the new sawtooth dimple profile. You know, th this not only reduces side force, but also has um, an effect and it really controls the vortex shedding that you would see in a crosswind condition. Okay, so in real terms then, for, for someone riding that bike, how can they picture what's actually happening to their yeah, wheel so, then? So exactly, so one of the things that you would feel like in a, in a rim that's not really optimized for stability, especially as the rim gets deeper and deeper, you, you'll feel a big um, twitches in the handlebars. That's happening because there's a big pressure bubble and then it sheds it, it all at once. What we wanna do is basically give you know, both with the dimple pattern and with the new profile, basically give the, the rim mechanisms for really to shed that pressure bubble before it big, uh, builds too, too large. And what you're gonna feel on the handlebars is maybe a slight twitch, but it's not gonna be disturbing like the big um, pressure dump that you would see in a, in a normal deep section wheel. So you can effectively use the wheels uh, in conditions where you might normally think twice. It, exactly, you'll notice that, you know, at its deepest point, it's, it's about the depth of a 404. You know, at its shallowest point, it's about the, the depth of a 303. So what you're gonna notice is, you're gonna notice the aerodynamic efficiency of, of, of a rim like a 404 depth at the control and the handleability of something like a 303. 
Okay, so that's how the sawtooth rim profile works. What else do you need to know? Well, although the previous version, the 404 NSW, has sawtooth dimples on there, the dimples on here have been altered, both in shape, so they're now so-called hex fins, but also in placement, so they now sit between the hydrofoils, so that's the, the little nodes here. The wheel weight has also decreased from the 404 NSWs, which is particularly impressive when you consider the fact that the carbon layup is presumably much more complex to allow for the differences in rim height here. But the number of spokes has stayed the same, so we've still got 18 up front and 24 out the back. The hub set is also the same, including this Cognition Free Hub, which has got lower drag and also, let's face it, a super cool noise. And then the brake track is also the same as the current NSW wheels. So it's called Showstopper. And what it is, is it's basically got these little ridges that have been pressed into the top layer, which is silicon carbide. Now, I've actually literally just witnessed this very surface being heated up to well over 300 degrees C before the tire blew off the rim, which was quite dramatic, mighty impressive, and also was a heck of a lot of braking force. Now, one other interesting point, and that is rim width. So these are the same width as the current 404 NSWs, so 27.8 millimeters wide at the broadest point. Now, they have been designed specifically with 23C and 25C tires in mind. But I did ask Zip specifically about this, and they said they've tested loads of different rim widths, but they felt that ultimately 23s and 25s are more aerodynamic than 28C tires. And these wheels are all about aero, so that is what they've gone for. These are not designed specifically with gravel grinding in mind. Although you could stick them on your epic enduro or road bike and you'd probably get on quite well. Now there is one bit of bad news and that is that these wheels take even longer to make than the 404 NSWs. In fact, it takes 12 work hours to craft each wheel. So unfortunately, there is a premium price tag on here. They're gonna retail for about $4,000. Certainly though, it's gonna be interesting, fascinating in fact, to see how these wheels are gonna fare, particularly in the World Tour next season. So I'm gonna be watching out with interest. Now, we have been lucky enough to spend a few days with Zip earlier in the year, and so we've got a couple of great videos you might wanna watch, including a retro versus modern in the wind tunnel, testing two pairs of wheels, just over there. How'd you go in there? Or to actually see carbon wheels being made in the factory, then click for a video just over there. And do make sure you subscribe to GCN as well before going to either of those. To do that, just click on the globe.